Welcome to the final episode about crystals. Today's lesson will be split into two parts. We're going to start today's lesson by talking about organite, and then we're going to move on to what I call the crystal movement. To discuss organite, first we must discuss the basics of organ energy. Simply put, organ is energy. In fact, it's another name for the multi-named etheric energy that is everywhere and embodies all things. Reiki energy, prana, biomagnetic energy, chi, soft electrons, and life force energy are all names for the same thing. An organ matrix or organite crystal device is a device that provides assistance with working with these etheric energies. Organite both releases organ energy when stimulated by other forms of energy, and has the capacity to change organ energy from one state to another. It is especially suited for dissolving negative energy in an area and converting it to balanced, healthy energy. This makes it especially useful in a wide range of applications, from alternative health, radionics, and other traditional metaphysics. Where did organite come from? Well, in the 1930s and 40s, Dr. Wilhelm Reich was able to detect and measure the existence of etheric energy, which he called organ, using a modified Geiger counter. He determined that by stacking alternating layers of fiberglass, which is an organic substance, and steel wool, an inorganic substance, you could attract and collect organ energy of both positive and negative polarities. He called the positive energy POR and the negative energy DOR, which stands for positive organ and deadly organ. <laughs> He began constructing a device that was able to successfully heal his patients of various ailments, including various forms of cancer, by having them sit inside the box for periods of time. In 1986, scientists at the University of Malberg in Germany published the results of a blind study, which showed that 30-minute organ accumulator treatments caused a consistent psychopsychological effect. They published that their investigations displayed evidence for the assumption that the properties of organ accumulators and its effect on humans factually exists. Reich's work continued into the 60s by a really open-minded Russian scientist named Dr. Nikolai Kozirev, among others, who also scientifically proved that such unseen energies do exist all around us. This work led to the Soviet military using torsion field sciences in their military defense applications, which shows that amazing discoveries that can change the world can both be used for the light as well as the dark. In continuing this work, modern science has taken it to whole new levels in trying to figure out the nature of dark matter, zero-point energy, and the vacuum flux, and these are all discussions for another time. In 2000, organ accumulators came into being when Don and Carol Croft discovered through much research that mixing organic fiberglass resin and metal chips poured into a small molds like paper cups and muffin pans would produce a substance which would attract etheric energy. Then, by putting crystals into the mix, you get something even more amazing. Carol Croft, who was incredibly gifted in sensing etheric energies, found that adding a quartz crystal to the organite would cause the organite to not just attract all kinds of energy, but rebalance and transmute all of the negative energy into positive. As we learned in Crystals 1, this is because the molecular structure of quartz is incredibly stable and harmonically aligned with the geometry of the universe. Organic substances attract and hold a scalar charge, while metallic substances tend to repel it. Basically, organite pulls in bioenergy, and while energy is inside the device, metal particles and organic resin both push and pull on it in all directions at the same time. This puts friction on the energy, where the crystal will begin to create order from chaos by aligning the structure of the energy into a more positively aligned pattern. Crystals and gems all have their uses that we've looked at, and organite does too. Organite is good for putting in an area that is needing a transmutation of a lot of negative energy into positive energy, and depending on what that situation is, you may need lots or very little. There's actually one final thing I'd like to bring up about organite, which is actually called tower busting. It has been widely experienced that the widespread use of cell phone towers create a thick blanket of DOR or negative organ energy around the areas between them. This saturates our homes and communities with negative energies that promote drought, negativity, fear, and so on. I'm not saying that the towers are causing the negativity of the world, but perhaps just stimulating or intensifying it. However, it has been experienced that this can be remedied by placing or burying organite at the base of a cell phone tower. Thousands of aware and selfless beautiful people in the world have begun doing this and slowly helping out in what is being called the organite gifting movement. And this is happening all over the world. And we need your help as well. To find out more about organite, check out www.organite.info where it talks about the science behind it and the gifting movement and how to get involved yourself. 
Or check out the link in the comments to an article by my friend Trey, who makes Organite and has written a big explanation about how and why it works. Now we're going to move on to the crystal movement. Now I realize from the title you might be thinking, what? Is this some kind of new movement like Zeitgeist or Occupy, only based around crystals? <laughs> well, not really. But if we follow through with this, this shift in consciousness could be an incredibly smooth process. Crystals, being conscious, don't just like sitting around in the same spot all the time. They like to travel, just as most people do. Crystals move about when they want to. They change owners, jump out of your pocket, and flat out abandon you when the time is right for them. If you are in tune, you will be able to know when a crystal is ready to move to someone or somewhere else. Just like people, when we are done with a task, it might be a time to move on to something new. Crystals are the same way. I've had many experiences where a crystal of mine that I loved decided to leave, stay somewhere else, be with someone else, or just flat out vanish on me. It's all fine though, because that's where it went, which means that's where it needs to be. The crystal movement is about the movement of crystals across the world and into the hands of the people. It's time for crystals to help the human race find ourselves and return to a higher state of awareness and frequency by bringing in pure and high frequencies that we need. All over the world, people are beginning to give crystals and move them around. They are giving them as gifts for holidays and birthdays. One thing I've started doing is actually carrying around a little bag of crystals with me all the time to hand out to people that I encounter as I go about my day. When a person who's down on their luck asks you for some spare change or a cigarette, you can reply, Sorry, I don't have any change, but I'd love to share a crystal with you, and then briefly describe what it is this particular crystal does, if you know, and wish them safe journeys on the path that they are walking. I encourage everyone to try just doing that. What you're doing is literally giving out a little pocket of love or abundance or insight, and who knows what will manifest into their life. It feels absolutely incredible. It's so good to share crystal magic with people and to see their eyes light up when they are holding their brand new rose quartz or kyanite or whatever. Ultimately, it's just spreading goodness. If you're shy and don't necessarily want to hand them out to strangers, you could also just leave them wherever you go. Jim Carrey said that he used to go around and write, have a great day on $20 bills and leave them around the city for others. You can do that with crystals. Can you imagine the feeling of stopping to tie your shoe and finding a beautiful piece of rose quartz just saying, take me. Now imagine being able to give that to others. Compassion, love, and gratefulness are such powerful and incredible emotions and frequencies, and love will be the force that brings us together. Now, we have mainly been focusing on what smaller crystals can do. Pocket stones are wonderful on an individual basis, but now let's come up with some ideas that we could do with larger crystals. Large crystals are very powerful. You can do a lot with large crystals, and you can help a lot of people if you put them in the right places. For example, putting large geodes for healing and love in hospitals could help many, many people recover incredibly quickly. Crystals around your home can influence or aid in your family life. Putting crystals in the classroom could help students both learn and grow more as individuals and communities. We could install large crystals of abundance and love into homeless shelters, and who knows what could happen. Even smaller businesses can benefit with some crystals around the office or work environment. I feel it's very important that we start investing in crystals and fast, not because of the economic reasons, but because of what it will do for us and what beauty and love it could bring into our lives. So how do we do this? This is probably something that needs some organization and we need to follow through. On the Spirit Science website, we've been partnering and working with many people who work with crystals. Our friend Kiko makes chakra necklaces, which you can get through the site. We're also working with my friend Trey, who makes Organite to help get as many of these Organite devices out to the world as possible. How about bigger crystals? We feel this is half to going to work on a community basis. Obviously, not many people have hundreds of dollars to spend on crystals to share with their communities or workspaces, or local hospitals, shelters, and schools. However, collectively, we do. I encourage everyone who is on board with this to share these videos and information with all of those around you and look into collectively pooling your resources into bringing some powerful, energetic fountains into your environment. Not only will this bring in a lot of good energy, but it will also create a lot of love connections between the individuals who are sharing the experience of getting crystals together. And if you do put crystals in a home or workspace or environment, take a picture of it and send it to us. We could put it up on the website and show how the crystal movement is doing. And that takes us to the end of the crystal special, but this is only the beginning of our exploration with crystals. Now it's up to you to do something with it. So let's go out and share some love with the world. See you next time.